Aidan Chafford podcast. What episode is this? Episode 65. <laughs> Do you know what? You'd think I'd be, I'd be good at this by now. 65, yeah, we've been been doing this for a while. That's yeah. So Thank you. Um, if you're wondering who this is, uh, this is Amy Smile um, joining us today uh, to just talk about our fashion brand, Odd News. I'm so glad to have you on. We've been... Yeah, I was really excited when, like I told you just a second ago, excited to get you on. So I guess the way we start the show is we let the person who's a guest on just tell the people about themselves. So go ahead, tell the people about yourself and what you've been up to. So my name is Amy. I, in back in September, I started my own fashion brand, Odd Muse. Um, I left my job in London to do this and yeah, it's worked out quite well going pretty well so that's yeah. like, i'm sure we'll talk more yeah, about nice. it, but in a yeah, nice. perfect uh right, boys introduce yourself cool uh colson nisi you already know what it is big 2l cool con collective <laughs> Don Corleone, all those all those aliases you know who it is Eman. uh yes Eman. sorry about the voice and sorry about the face it's just uh... <laughs> <laughs> The man's a um, disclaimer. Ba- yeah, basically, it was just, it's been a rough week, but not on a mad one, but it's been a very productive week. So I hear just that. understand that right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'm Demi, you know, the real is back, the real is back, two Dems, um, episode 65 with Amy. So happy to have her on. So, like you said, you left your job to start Odd News. What was the inspiration for you? Like, what was that? You know what? This is, forget the job. Uh, I'm going to leave and I'm going to start my own fashion, my own collection, fashion brand. Well, what I'd was... always wanted to, sorry, I cut you off a little bit there. Um, no, it's not. I'd always um, wanted to be a fashion buyer. So I studied at a uni fashion buy and went into ASOS. And after about four months there, I sort of started to realise that there's like 500 girls here with my job. Whenever a promotion comes up, I'm only... I'm new, so I'm bottom of the barrel. I literally saw myself mm. like it's going to take me years just to like promote to a wage that is still not sort of good enough. Um, so I just didn't see a future there. Um, although I was learning a lot, um, I just um, told myself that I've just got to do it on my own. As soon as I sort of told myself that I'm going to start my own fashion brand, I didn't really like, I just skipped to work every day. Like it wasn't. I used to mm. get sort of really annoyed going to work every day thinking, what am I doing? Um, but no, I just turned it around and made it into a situation where I just thought, I'm learning a lot and I'm going to take this somewhere someday. Um, and actually over lockdown, so I was actually on the premium brands department at um, ASOS. So it was like all brands that I aspired to be like. Mm. Um, and over lockdown, they moved me to the beauty department and no one could understand why I was just like so up set that I'd moved to this department it was in ASOS it's like the best department to be on because it's so much fun you go to all these events but for me I was like no I want my own brand and I was learning a lot on that department so I guess moving departments sort of pushed me to just do it I had it already in my head but it was just a case of when and that sort of move being so miserable at work made me just do it I literally like I had it, all the designs and stuff done already for when I wanted to, but I just like literally put everything into it from that point. Um, mm. so, yeah, pretty much just lockdown pushed me to do it, being unhappy at work. So yeah, that's that's crazy. I guess you, all, I guess everyone has that moment that it's like, yo, this is what's going to make me actually take this seriously. And I guess it's interesting that lockdown was what did it for you, yeah. and then the growth you've seen over such a a period of time has been insane. Yeah, I mean, what's that been like for you? Really, really lucky. Like, I'm not, I, in, I tell myself that I really, I, I, I tell myself that I worked really hard for it, and in a way, I do deserve it. But I do feel very, very lucky. Like, I would have, mm. I never thought it would happen this quick, and I would have stayed at it for years and waited for this to happen. So, yeah. I do feel really lucky that it's turned around this quickly. That's really interesting, actually. Do you, so, for example, I guess what would be the normal length for? a brand to see the sort of success that you've had like what how long should really it take would you say I don't, I don't really know but honestly I didn't see this happening for me for at least like two or three years mm. um, 
but yeah it's just it's so good like it's allowed me to sort of I've got so many other ideas for the brand and it's just allowing me to like invest into these ideas and yeah I just feel really really lucky what type of things do you reckon you you took with you from ASOS to apply to Odd Muse so basically at ASOS I was doing buying and buying is really like you learn how to sell clothes. So I really mm. learned like the business behind selling these clothes, like how many units, where in the UK um, c consumers are, how they behave. I really learned like the art behind selling clothes. Um, mm. my, the thing I'm actually probably, my weakest thing in fashion is probably my, my design, fashion design. But I think that's why people can relate quite a lot because a lot of people have like this interest in fashion like me, but can't design. And I like can't, design the same way as fashion designers do but I just make Got it work you. and I work with some amazing people and mm. yeah so yeah I've just I so going back to that question um mm. from ASOS I just learned sort of the science behind selling clothes yeah that's smart a lot of people don't realize there's actually value in being within the system and then taking the knowledge you can get within the industry and applying it to your own stuff so there's one thing but learning how to sell them is just like a whole other yeah. game but so what's yeah, the science I, behind that what's the science behind that because i was speaking with someone the other day and i was just like there's so many jobs out there that people do that you don't actually even realize there's a job but obviously <laughs> someone has to do that no one knew what that was so everyone would be like what but it's basically so i would basically do the with my team we'd do the yeah. selection for ASOS. So we would pick what ASOS would sell in what units on a Monday we'd meet up and see like how our customer reacted to them. And then we trade into like how she's been behaving and like what she's been buying. So it's sort of like, you just have to go off consumer reactions. How many, I mean, yeah. the, the data that you get from when people buy, like just from what sort of shop they've gone on to next, how long they had it in their basket, if they, all stuff like that, you get all that data and it's really interesting to analyse and it's, that is sort of selling clubs. There's so much that goes on behind the doors. Um, Yo, clubs. Amy, I just realised you're the algorithm. So you're the one that when I'm like in my inbox or I get yeah. an email from ASOS, they're like, oh, we think you'd like this. How, like, how do you know? Of course, I, don't I used know to hate do. that, but now it's like, <laughs> I love it. But is, I, I am on the annoying Instagram ads that I always used to hate. <laughs> <laughs> you turned into that. That's crazy. But yeah, some it's so helpful though. Have, would you would you use them? And do you shop anywhere else? Obviously, you've got your own collection, so I'd imagine you you you, just, you model most of it. So that's great. But would yeah. you do you wear anyone else? Um, do you know what? I don't know if it's just because it's been like lockdown or not, but I haven't been wearing many other brands. But I'm not sure mm. if that's because I've had not much to do. Um, don't, 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 don't give don't give them the promo. It's all about odd news. Nah, that, that's yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> yeah, I've been. My friends have been doing the same as well. Whenever we're out, I'm like, we're all wearing odd news. No excuses. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so what what's the future for odd news for you? Like, what where do you want to go, and where do you see? what's the journey where do you see it going basically oh, it's just i'd literally just don't know i would love to have um a few flagship stores this is like mega mega in the future um mm. but i'd love to have sort of more flagship stores at the moment i sort of release collections with like six pieces i'd love to like sort of grow that collection but i want to grow in a sort of pace that i'm happy with i don't want it to sort of get out of control like at the moment it's still just yeah. so having six pieces to a collection is just all I Perfect. can really sort of do yeah. even in the terms of like packing the orders like it's just me I do get some mm. help but yeah I'm just gonna keep going and um, but yeah obviously the dream is to have sort of like flagship stores I want a huge like my main place I want to be is online like I want that huge online presence because mm -hmm. oh, in the internet's not going anywhere um, yeah so yeah, yeah but i would love a few flagship stores in say god maybe at, less than 10 years at know. this at this rate you have them next month mate Where you're going. <laughs> i really respect that as well like not biting off more than you can chew and just being like these are the six items i've got in my collection yeah. um and just realizing you know working with what you've got as well so that's really impressive and i really like what you your idea for the business and the fact that um, okay, the jacket might be a little bit, I don't want to say it's expensive, I think it's a fair price at around £130, yeah. but I feel like the way you said it's an investment, you know, that's this is something that, you know, 
can be used with so many different things and for so many different outfits. And as a group, we were talking about this literally the other day about the idea of people returning stuff a lot. And that's the sort of culture you're trying to avoid within yeah. your Odd Muse. Yeah, that sort of, uh, that's, that was sort of like the whole idea behind Odd Muse, this idea of like, we don't have to just wear things once. Like, I'm mm. when I've done it. Like, I, I've totally been... Also, it's like pretty little thing and all these brands, it's like we, as young girls, we're very tempted into the cheaper prices. Mm. And so if you can get value for money, you are essentially spending the same amount of money if you're buying a £20 dress every single weekend. Like, why not invest in something that you can keep? And also, like, what a lovely idea to have something in your wardrobe that you can pass down one day. Like, that has yeah. to be. Um, that is sort of like the main core thing to order. Yeah. And it seems so simple, but it has such a point of difference on the market because fast fashion has just taken over. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Buy it, and then they buy it with no intention of really owning it. And then it's just a bit like, oh, well, they send it back anyway. Yeah. And I guess trying to avoid that. And there's so many things that the jacket, um, the beige, I want to say it is, the beige jacket is so lovely and can just go with so many different things. So I think encouraging girls to you to wear more than just the one item or yeah. just to have the one item that they can use several yeah. times over and over yeah, again. We're giving them that, op that option to sort of feel like they're wearing something new. So mm. I think that's why it's done so well. Like in my head, I knew it was going to do well. I ordered like a more... That's the one you ordered more of, yeah. yeah. But then I didn't expect to, you know, I think in total now we've nearly sold a thousand across the black and the camel, which is just crazy. Literally. It crazy. is. I've, I've, like <laughs> exactly. Being able to say you've sold a thousand or something, that's insane. Yeah. Well, that well done. Crazy. You've gone platinum. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the blazer's gone platinum. That's good. <laughs> that's that's what you should say. That's how you should celebrate it. Anyway, I was saying that was good mathematics, but um, basically, <laughs> what is um, why the name Odd Muse? So the brand is all about sort of all women being the muse, and it's like the idea of like I'm not an influencer and I'm not a this, but I'm still a muse, and that might be odd. Mm. And that was sort of the, there was a lot of there was a lot more thought behind that name, but that's how I sort of like. It's sort of just like, or like, why do why do those girls we feel like this? Like, for a long time, I've always wanted a fashion brand, but I just thought I like just couldn't do it. There was one point in my life that I actually thought I wanted to be an influencer because I wanted to be heard in the fashion industry. But mm -hmm. you don't have to be an influencer or have this amount of followers or whatever to be heard in the mm -hmm. fashion industry. Normal people can start their own businesses and and be heard. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that is it. Odd news. Is there anyone like celebrity or just in your life maybe who you want to see in Odd Muse like one day? Like what would be the, oh my gosh, that person is wearing Odd Muse? Well, believe it or not, it was actually Lorna Lux who was the first person to wear my blazer. So she mm. she is an influencer, but I, I say to everyone, like she is just like one of these people who like, she is just, that is just her life and she's such an authentic person. She doesn't like, she she's genuinely got this massive interest for fashion like she's yeah. so creative so i said from the get-go i that is my dream above anyone else lorna lux wear my blazer um mm. which is just crazy that she bought it um i'd actually like even above there were so many dms of me saying to her like can i send you my blazer like, will you wear it but she never saw it and, <sighs> She never saw it, no. And then one day I was um, packing orders and it was to a Lorna Andrews. And I was like, oh, I wonder if that's Lorna Lux. Like, is Lux her real name? Like, what a great second name. Um, <laughs> and then, like, later that day, she posted saying, just purchased this blazer and already got a notification that it's coming tomorrow. And I was like... That's unreal. Wow. I was, like, it, I was, like, crying on the kitchen floor. I was the only person... <laughs> I was like, I can't believe it. No one could understand what I was saying. And my mother walked in like, what's happened? Like, <laughs> my iPad was going, ka-ching, 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 because loads of people were ordering this blazer. And everyone was like, what is going on? I was like, oh, the Lux has bought my blazer. It was just the 
the maddest thing to ever happen. Like, I was crying so much. Oh, I'm so happy you got that moment. So early on as well. She's just the one person I really yeah. wear it. Like, I just love her and her creativity. And mm -hmm. I, she was just my dream. But no, I, I can't that. tell amazing. you who else, like, is my dream well, now. Well, you've done it. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't see this coming so soon. I, but, yeah, I'm just, she's a dream. I, I just uh, love her so much. I'm not happy. Like, <laughs> Speaking about influencers, have you had some uh, influencers who have requested some items? Oh, and um, them man, well, those individuals are not really on posting. Um, they just want a free item and then once they, they can wear it, but they will not necessarily advertise your business as well. Have you had those moments as of yet? Yeah, I have had that. I have had those moments, but I don't like want to, I don't know. I just, yeah, I have yeah. had those moments and I get a lot of people message, but now I'm, I'm, I'm sort of learning from that. Like I'm not, I'm only going to send to people who I feel genuinely love my brand. Like I've had yeah. influence messaging me for things and they don't even follow the brand. Mm. And it's not for me, it's not about how many followers you had. Like I sent, I sent low, I sent the whole party collection to these two girls. They had like 300 followers, but their content was just amazing. And that's what it is for me. And they, genuinely really love my brand and that's all i'm sort of looking for in yeah. like, when i'm working with people like i don't just want to work with people just because they've got a high number of followers mm. no i like that that's i don't expect that i think that's the way to go about it everyone's got something to offer as well it's like not about having followers it's about the yeah. create if you, you're passionate about fashion or my brand like then yes i will work with you yeah no that's that's the best that's the best way to go about it i think um so I just just wanted to touch on like this a real moment that must have been where I don't know how you feel about it, but when PLT you discovered that they'd more or less nicked your idea. What was it like waking up that morning, or when you noticed that and you put two and two together? Well, someone sent it to me, and I just knew straight away because I sort of worked in the fashion industry. I know this is what brands do, like brands like. PLT like thrive off this if they was do it going to do it to big brands they'd be paying thousands hundreds of thousands in sort of mm. court, court cases but with yeah. smaller brands like, I couldn't take PLT to court mm. and like yeah. even from I remember the owner from House of CB I went to a live podcast of hers and House of CB dresses get copied by a pretty little thing every single week they literally create wow. their own page and she just said, I've spent so much money trying to take fast fashion brands down just because I thought I'm a big brand, I have this money. But it just doesn't work. Like, it can mm. be something as little as the fabric composition, like being different, which it was definitely different. I ordered it and compared myself. But they, like, like it is different in terms of the fabric and the fit because it's not as nice quality. So I would have just wasted my time. Um, but I was a bit annoyed, like, I wasn't going to post about it because I thought, oh, people would just think, like, oh, what, they think pretty little things need to design. But I knew that had happened. Like, I'd seen... Yeah, and it's I, so clear, like, I've, I've seen the day. comparison. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's clear and day. I, had, like, I think I had, like, 2,000 followers on Odd News at the time. So anyone who was following me, I was sort of, I had the opportunity to look at. And there was a couple people that were Boohoo buyers and pretty little thing buyers. And I just mm. felt it come in. Um, mm. and then I saw that and I was like no I'm not having that because I know that I know that this is what's happened and like well done for signing up for yourself weird. like like it is and so many people agreed with me as well like I yeah I am um, put it on Facebook and I put it on Instagram but someone actually messaged me saying I don't use Twitter but someone actually messaged me saying you need to put this on Twitter because like people so many people are going to see this and retweet it mm -hmm. and thank god I did because I think to this day it's got like 10,000 retweets so many people were uh getting in touch and following the brand from it uh the daily mail got in touch so in a way i guess it's been like okay but it was it's just so annoying and if i saw it again i i would be really really upset mm. no I'm, it's just yeah. horrible. like i i i got like quite a lot of exposure from it in the end but that's not mm. the case for everyone yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, it's not fair like it's just so unfair like how the way i think someone someone actually tweeted me back saying i've just handed in my notice a pretty little thing no way Whoa. <laughs> they're riding out for you that's, that's, that's like, <laughs> asos do not do not do that like asos do not buy like that i was on a different
well. I wasn't on their own bread, but from what I've learned, like ASOS are like six months ahead of themselves. So like pretty mm-hmm. little thing, like turn it around in a week. Yeah, so mm. it's not. It's just not good. Corporations yeah, do this a lot, don't they? They yeah. they they nick ideas. I think something on a completely different note. I think you know about Spotify Wrapped. I think there was yeah. a, a young girl who who made the idea for Spotify. But then they didn't pay a residual. They they stole the idea and make basically monetize it themselves. Yeah. So it happens all the time. That's nuts. See this, and I think Amy, the most important thing you've done is you actually stood up for brands as well because it could happen. Like you said, it could happen to anyone. And obviously, I think, but you're just yeah, and you're lucky in the sense that you got the exposure out of it. But I really like when you said, you know, this might not happen for other brands. You might be like kicking and screaming, saying, "Yo, this has happened to me." Um, yeah, and they might they just might not get the recognition. Yeah. So I think we need to be more vigilant of that as well as buyers, where the real thing and the better thing is also there available for you. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm just so against like fast fashion now. Like even the way they make the clothes and the way they just rip off other designers. Like in the way the the pace they work, they have no time to think for themselves. Like they have to mm. go on Instagram and look at these. Like, it, there was a show on Misguided before and they openly document in their Monday meeting where they just say, like, what have you seen on Instagram this week? Mad. What have you seen? What can we nick? So, and Pretty Little Things slated Misguided for that documentary and saying that we mm. would never run our business like that. But it is exactly how they run their business. Mm. Oh, it's just so, it's so frustrating. And something that I didn't really, I guess now I'm, I'm more vigilant of it, but something I didn't really know was even going on in the industry where you know people have had their ideas nicked but yeah so i think as buyers as well we have a, a responsibility as well to look out and be like oh, okay if that's the case and there's an option to actually get from the actual person who made it i think that's the best way to go about it as well we'll just have to but no well done to you i'm really pleased that you stood up for yourself and i guess it gave you a lot of exposure which you know i guess you can only be grateful for um yeah. going on to a lot of exposure um you was recently in vogue yes Great. how was that that, that, that must was have been another surreal moment when the email come through asking me i was like no this can't be vogue like what and then i think i think they're originally owned by this company called condinast and their mm. email address was at condinast so i was like oh no it can't be real it can't be real and then i looked into this condinast and it was the actual vogue umbrella and i was like Wow. Yeah, they asked me to just be on this page with other new designers. So obviously I was just like, yes. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, that was just such a crazy moment. It was so nice that's, as seen in Vogue on my Instagram bio. Jeez, that is a moment. Um, I mean, that's like, obviously it's a starting uh, position, but even that's insane to be able to say, yeah, my uh, brand has been featured in Vogue. must have just been so surreal. Such a moment. I don't even know what I do. <laughs> I <laughs> like, like every single one in my local shop, everyone was crying. It was so fun. <laughs> I like I've got these Vogue magazines downstairs. I don't know what to do with them. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm, not giving anyone, I'm not giving anyone the chance to buy them for some reason. So I don't know. Uh, that much from it. <laughs> well, at least you can say it happened. Like you can definitely. That's a moment. For real, that you can look everyone's, back on. Everyone's like coffee table book in their house now. <laughs> I like that. That's but yeah, I mean for you, what do you think that moment will do for the business going forward or for the brand going forward? Do you think it just legitimizes it and makes it real? I think so. And yeah, I think so. And like Vogue is such like a collector's magazine and like mm-hmm. I can't say I've noticed anything mega yet. Um but mm. You know, I've just got this thing where I just want to just constantly be appearing, and that's what sort of marketing is just constantly being there. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's just another you've got to be in it to win it, really. Yeah, but yeah, it's just so nice to just that that moment just to have, even if nothing comes from it. It's, it was just such a moment. Mm. Are there any, no. any other like big like uh brands like that you'd probably love to feature in or like get your business on? I haven't really thought about it in terms of like wholesaling my product. I'm a bit, I don't know. I want to keep it sort of with me. I, respect sort of that. Like, I really associate my brand with, um, I don't know if you know house of CB. 
but mm -hmm. they're like i was when i worked at asos i was like contacting them all the time to try and get them on asos but they're very strictly like no all the we keep it all in house like mm. which i get so i would like to not sort of sell myself short mm. and yeah i'd love people to always come to odd news or kind of uk to buy their odd news instead of sort of i don't know asos or whatever but saying that i would love to be in selfridges <laughs> That would be good. <laughs> I would yeah, love yeah. the selfishes. That is going back to the goal question. That is such a goal. Mm, yeah, but I guess it keep. I guess the way you're working at the moment helps to keep the brand feel kind of niche and like one of one. Like you can't really get this anywhere else unless you've been to the website to get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gives it that exclusivity. Like that Correct. Yeah, exactly. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, what was the final topic? Uh, the final topic was, I guess it was future plans, but I, can't, I think we may basically address that to be fair. Um, future plans, selfridges. Actually, I do have a question. <laughs> selfridges, yeah. Go on, go on, you man. I do have a question. Um, going from employed to self employed, what was the conversation with your parents and how did it go? Um, I would get really annoyed at my mum and dad because they didn't want to sort of. I, it was the only thing I wanted to talk about and I was just like so frustrated about it. I think after a while my mum and dad, because I, I actually like, it wasn't really much of a risk because I had, I have my own marketing company. So it mm. was a situation where I was like leaving my job and I had no money. Um, but you know, it was a situation where I was spending like all this money that I'd save for a house on clothes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But do you know what? About two years ago, I used to get just slightly ump going to work and I'd bring my mum and ask her to lend me money to do this. And she would just be like, no, I don't think you're ready yet. And I'm so glad that she said that because I wasn't ready yet. And, mm -hmm. you know, then two years at ASOS, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, what was the question? Guy employed, self-employed. So yeah, when I officially decided I was going to do it, I was so unhappy at work. So my mum and dad were just like, they thought it was the right time but my mum did actually say why don't you at least stick it out till Christmas but I just like knew in my head I wouldn't be able yeah. to do this if I was still going into London 9 to 5 or even working from home so um yeah I think it was a bit of a long time coming they knew I was gonna do it I'm pretty much like if I want to do something I'm gonna do it um mm -hmm. so but yeah I think we're all yeah they're, they're really happy for me and yeah so yeah it's yeah. kind of crazy no, what that. the it's kind of crazy what corona has done for certain people like I it's know. really changed the course of history like if for example if that reorganization didn't happen you might even still be there and odd news might not be yeah what it, it is never now. happened i would have been going into london like nine to five every single day mm -hmm. like in lockdown i like grew my marketing company to be like an actual wage i can live on and I, in all the sort of spare time when you're not doing something at work, you're at home, so you can like get on with like your own stuff. Definitely. Um, so I like got all my designs and like thought of the brand name, thought of all my marketing plan like during lockdown, and I wouldn't have been able to do that because going into like the offices in Camden, so it used to take me. I used to get home at like half seven at night mm. and be absolutely knackered, like I wouldn't be able to do anything else. So lockdown has like been such a blessing for me which is such a weird thing to say but it's just mm. yeah like i grew my brand through lockdown yeah it kind of pushed you to take that big step really yeah and obviously but, like like anyone who was working from home saves quite a lot of money on like the train fares and even just like London. Yeah. so i managed to like save quite a lot of money in lockdown so i got to a point where i was like well i can do this now i've got the idea and i've got the money so what am i like for mm. absolutely perfect and, and another thing as well is um do you have a mentor if yes why a mentor mm. no i don't have a mentor what do you mean when you say that what like do you mean like someone like teaching me or like to like like a mentor guiding you through yeah guiding you through the steps um what's the next step what's the next stage when no, you see yourself in one month, two years, 18 years, stuff like that. No, I don't at this moment, but I have sort of thought about in a couple of years getting in touch with someone because like, if I really want to scale this, I don't really know mm -hmm. like, the mega next steps. Like I'm sort of taking every day as it comes. Like, I, 
I like to actually like fully like scale this and get a proper like e-commerce business model mm-hmm. to, sort of, mm. to get together. I would probably need to sort of, I don't know, get in touch with some sort of consultant to, to do that. But yeah, that has been on my mind. But to this moment, no, I don't. I'm just like winging it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're winging it very well. well. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's all, really. Thank you so much, Amy, for coming on and being a guest. It was a great conversation. I learned so much as well. So oh, thank it's you. It's always a pleasure when that happens. Oh, I've got one more question. Sorry, Sorry to cut you short. No. All right. 2021, what are the styles and what are the colours? <laughs> that's an interesting question. 2021, what are the styles, what are the colours? Well, I am, like I say, I'm winging it at the moment, so... I know just about my next collection. I've only just started on my summer collection, which is a bit mad for like brands just don't do that. Most brands are probably like sorted their next Christmas out. Um, but I never really at first, ex- I wasn't sure that I was going to make it to the second collection or so. Yeah, here I am. Um, but I am just going to keep it focused on lovely fabrics, investment colors. So nothing crazy probably not any sort of prints like clothes that essentially like you can whack out in the next year and it's still current because they are Mm. just classic um so that sort of i stick to the same sort of neutral color palette do you ever make a a menswear collection uh i've thought about it but i don't know i don't want to sort of not yet but i would love to do that if you need if you need male models you're looking at them right now (laughs) 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 Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, maybe one day, oh, Mr. Muse. Mr. Muse. Oh, you should already got the name for it as well. I'm mad. <laughs> Yo, we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Where they can find all your stuff online. Pardon? Tell the people where they can find all your stuff online. So my Instagram is Odd News London and the website is www.oddnews.co.uk. Perfect. Perfect. perfect yeah. Perfect. No, thank you once again for coming on. You're welcome. Like, Thanks for having me. No problem. No, it's been a pleasure. Me. Yeah, I can't stress how much I've learned. So, yeah. Oh, thank been, uh, you. It's been great. Oh. Thank you. It's been oh. very inspirational and um, I definitely did enjoy this conversation. For real. Me too. Thanks for having me. Like, share, subscribe. All that good stuff. What a good stuff was. Cool. Cool. Until next time, guys. All right. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.